what I probably would want to do in this situation is I can tell I have a few different individual parts, but they're all combined on the same layer. In order to isolate those parts, I probably would want to select those and then move them to their own layer. That way I have the freedom to isolate individual parts when I need to. And I think I probably will in this case. I'm first going to hide the sculpt tree object and I'm going to move this retopo objects. I want to move it to the inside. There we go. Let's hide that voxel object. Now what I can do is select the select tool, go to faces mode and double click. And that's going to select all contiguous faces. So with that done, I can go to this group or create a new empty layer, double click. I'll just name it fibers. Let's come down to the bottom of the panel and I'll choose move faces to the current layer. I can hide that and see that it was indeed moved there. All right. Now let's select the next object. I'll do the same by creating a new layer. Double clicking. Let's call it riser. Move to the currently selected layer by clicking that icon. I can hide that. And I'll select this visor, if you want to call it that. Create a new layer. Double click. Visor. And move to select the layer. And hide that. Now I'm left with two remaining parts. This base helmet and then these cheat guards. So let's try and select the cheat guard and see if it's attached. It is. Let me hit the escape key and double click this one. It's separated. So I could do a sim copy in order to keep these separated. And I may just do that. Again, I'll double click. With that selected, I can now hit the S key to bring up the symmetry panel. Then enable symmetry along the X axis. We have a sim copy option here in the panel. Another option is to scroll down to the bottom section under entire mesh and select symmetry. I'm going to turn symmetry off for the moment. Hit the escape key to drop the selection. I'll double click. I can see that it was indeed copied over. Okay. So now that that's good to go, I may put these on the same layer. Double click. Let's create a new layer. Move to that currently selected layer. There we go. Next, I'll double click this one and rename it. Now that I've done all that, I'm ready to apply beveling to all the hard edges. I'm first going to go to the upper left hand corner and turn off the UV seams to make it a little bit easier to see. With the select tool active and in edges mode, I can select seams this way by holding down the shift key and selecting contiguous loops. I'll go ahead and hit escape to drop the selection. A quicker way to go about it would be to make sure that I'm in edges mode. I can scroll down to the selected section here and I can choose select sharp. I may not see any highlighted selection initially, but once I begin to scrub the crease angle slider, I will see a preview of what the selection will look like. Let's go back to 60. Okay, so let's go with that. If I want to save the selection, I have an option for that. Store or load the selection. In this case, I don't really need to do that. I'm just going to go to the next tool beneath Select Sharp, which is Bevel. Now I can see a preview of the bevel. As I scrub, I can see how it's going to be applied once I hit OK. With that done, I'm going to go to the other meshes. I've got an opening here. I could leave it that way, but I'm going to go ahead and close it by going to the R Fill tool. I'll see a preview and I'll just click. And that's going to close it. Uh, let's go back to Select. I can actually right click instead of scrolling down to the selected section, and I should be able to select Sharp right here. Okay, so I will scrub slightly. 
and let's see if we add that. Bring it down to about 50. I think it looks fine. I hit OK. I can right click and then choose bevel. I want to be a little bit careful with that because it may cause some self intersection down here, which I do not want. I'll hit OK. I'll hide that. Go to this other object. I'm going to do the same thing with our fill. I'm going to fill that in. Go back to the select tool. Right click. Select sharp. And before I do this, I may want to clean up some of the polygons here. So I'm going to do that. Um, I'm going to use delete edges. It basically dissolves edges. I think that's the term used in Blender. So, yeah, I'm just going to create a big end gone here. And do the same thing. I'll use split rings. And then use the add and split tool. I can use my bracket keys to reduce my brush size. Escape. And the reason why I need to hit escape is you can see 3D Coat is assuming I want to continue cutting. In this case, I do not. And then I may split. If I want to make sure I'm halfway in between, I can hit the space bar and enter the value numerically. 0.5 will be halfway. Okay. Now let's go back to the select tool, make sure we're in edges mode. Again, I can right click and choose select sharp. And just barely touch or begin scrubbing. Looks about right. I'll hit OK. I can right click and choose bevel. It's going to remember my last settings. So I'll leave it like that. I can go to conical if I want. Hit OK. Now I can hide that, go to the, this visor. I'm going to clean up the geometry a little bit here. Delete edges and delete some of those. All right, and I'm going to split rings. And, uh, let me go back here to delete edges. I forgot to do it on the inside. I probably should turn symmetry on, but that's fine. Uh, this will be done quickly enough. Okay. So split rings on the inside as well. And split. Escape. Escape one more time. All right. Let's go back to the Select Tool, Edges Mode. Right click and choose Select Sharp. Everything looks right. OK. Right click and choose Bevel. It'll be fine. 
Now for these Chi guards. I hit the S key to turn symmetry on. Right click, choose select sharp. Hit OK. Right click, bevel. Right, OK. Just make sure we don't have any self intersections. And turn symmetry off. All right, now that we have completed the beveling of all of our individual parts, we're going to pick up in the next video where we're going to subdivide the meshes and move a copy over into the sculpt workspace. So stay tuned and we'll see you then.